This is now our second video looking at the locus of the complex number. In this particular video, we're going to look at problems in the form the modulus of z minus a is equal to the modulus of z minus b. In all of these, the coefficient in front of either moduli is going to be 1. If the coefficient isn't 1, that's going to give us a completely different locus, which we will look at in the next video. The way I like to read this now is the distance of z from a is the same as the distance from b. a and b are fixed numbers and z is just moving around a locus that's the same distance away from each other. This gives rise to a perpendicular bisector. At the start of the video we'll look at some very basic cases and with those particular basic cases just graphing it is, is very straightforward and it will become quite apparent what the Cartesian equation of that locus is. As we move through some of the more challenging examples it's often a case that you can use algebraic manipulation to find the equation of that perpendicular bisector in the form y is equal to mx plus c. So let's do a couple of really nice straightforward ones. The modulus of z minus 4 is equal to the modulus of z minus 2. So if we had an argon diagram and we place these on, what we've got now are two real numbers. We've got 4, so let's put 4, and we've got 2. If we wanted the perpendicular bisector, I'm going to be lazy and just put this on rather than trying to draw it on. What we're going to have now is a straight line. So the distance now is always going to be the same. And quite clearly, the Cartesian equation of that locus is x is equal to 3. So we could say now that the Cartesian equation is x is equal to 3. If we had, for example, the modulus of z minus, if we went for minus, uh, what should we have? Minus 2i is equal to the modulus of z minus 6i. So let's put this on. What we've now got is on uh, purely imaginary numbers. So we've got 2 and 6, so let's put those on. Uh, let's grab that down. 2 and 6, so let's grab some dots. There's 6 and there is 2. And all we would now do is put the perpendicular bisector on. We'd have that point just here and then this one just here. And we can see that the Cartesian equation of the locus is going to be y is equal to 4. So they have a nice straightforward cases. Uh, we'll look as we go through these examples of somewhere we've got uh, both uh, imaginary and uh, real numbers. So we've got inside the modulus, we've got the complex number. So for example, z minus 2i plus 4 and so on and so forth. Okay, so z minus 6, modulus of z minus 6 is equal to the modulus of z minus 2. So if we just quickly sketch this up, what we've got now are these two complex or, uh, real numbers in uh, the argon diagram, so let's put those on. So we'd have now 2 and 6, so 2 is going to be here, 6 is going to be here. We want the perpendicular bisector of those. Quite clearly, that's going to give us a straight line like we've just done, and that's going to go straight down there, and we can say that x is going to be equal to 4. And we would just write on there, x is equal to 4. Uh, okay, x is equal to 4. With this one we're going to have 1 at 4, we're going to have 1 at minus 8, we simply find the number in between the two. So what's that going to be? Uh, x is equal to minus 2. This particular case we've got now the modulus of z is equal to the modulus of z plus 6i. So let's locate those two uh, purely imaginary, uh, well in this case uh, this one's purely imaginary, we've got down here minus 6i We've got this point right here, which is going to be 0. If we want the Cartesian equation of the locus is the perpendicular bisector, and we can see that y is going to be equal to minus 3. OK, now this is one where we've got something slightly different, as we've got now both uh, the real and the imaginary parts to the number. If you look at this one, though, what we've got is z minus 2i, uh, sorry, z minus 2 minus 2i. So we've got a modulus of that, and then we've got is equal to the modulus of z plus 2 plus 2i. If we located these two points on an argon diagram, hopefully you will see what we're going to get before we have to employ any nasty uh, te algebraic techniques. This one right here, let's put this one up here. This is going to be 2 plus 2i. 
and then we've got this one down here which is going to be minus 2 minus 2i so minus 2 minus 2i and then what we want now is the perpendicular bisector common error now is that people uh, will put that that is for the locus. Remember, it isn't. We're looking at points equidistant from those two complex numbers. And remember, these are fixed. It's Z that's, uh, that's changing. So this right now is going to be that line. And you can see that the original was Y is equal to X. This is going to be Y is equal to minus X. That is the Cartesian equation of the locus. If you wanted to, you could have gone through the algebraic route with that but essentially, you'll see that it's going to be quite messy. The same with these particular cases. If we we could again use algebraic techniques on this one, but it's, it could potentially end up being quite messy if we did. If we just drew this up, what we've got now, and let's put these. Uh, let's just draw a quick sketch. We've got this point now, so let's deal with this one. So we've got the modulus now of z plus three minus five i. So let's put that there. Let's say it's going to be about here. So this is going to be minus 3 plus 5i. And then if we look at this one, we've got minus 7 minus 5i. So that's going to be somewhere over here. And that's going to be 7 plus 5i. As you can see, the i components are equal. Therefore, we're in a straight line. So essentially, all we're looking for then is the perpendicular bisector of these right here. And let's put that on. And what's that going to give us? Uh, x is equal to 2. That looks pretty good. And let's just put that there. And we can put x is equal to to. So often, going through the rigmarole of the algebraic manipulation really isn't necessary. Let's look at doing it with some algebraic manipulation though. If we take h, the modulus of z plus 4 minus 2i is equal to the modulus of z minus 8 plus 2i. If we drew these on an argon diagram, let's look at what that's going to look like, give or take. Remember, these are just sketches. If they don't have to be wildly accurate. We've got minus 4, 2. So let's check that one there. So minus 4 uh, plus 2i. And then this one we've got now uh, minus 8. Uh, so that's like going to give us 8 minus 2. Okay, so this is going to be now uh, 8 and then minus 2i. What we're looking for is the perpendicular bisector. You can do this using this. Uh, in fact, let's just use a different one. You can do this using the skills of... Um, what you would have learnt uh, with the distance formula and also just finding the midpoint. So if we did this now, it's going to be give or take, something like so. So if you want to find the gradient of this line using simple coordinate geometry, gradient of line, find the midpoint and you can run now a perpendicular bisector through and that will give you the equation in Cartesian form of the locus. Alternatively though, if you wish, you could express this now as x plus i y is equal to z. Now, if we take this one, what we've got, and going back to a previous video, we can express this as the following. The modulus of x plus 4 and then plus i, and then we would have the modulus, uh, sorry, uh, y minus 2, and then we'd have the modulus of that, and that would be equal now to the modulus of x minus 8 and then we'd have plus i and then we'd have y plus 2. So we can see that it could if you didn't want to go for this geometric approach you can do it algebraically. From the previous video and our work before we've seen now that if we remove the moduli we're going to get now the square root of x plus 4 all squared plus quantity y minus 2 all squared and that's going to be the square root of x minus 8 all squared plus the quantity y plus 2 all squared. When we remove the roots and square this out all of the squared terms are going to disappear and simply give us a linear equation in the form y is equal to mx plus c and you can probably see that's going to happen. So if you want to do that, you can have x squared plus 8x plus 16 plus y squared minus 4y plus 4 will be equal to x squared minus 16x plus 64 
plus y squared plus 4y plus the 4. You can see that these are going to go, so our x squareds and y squareds are going to cancel, and we're simply now left with a linear equation to tidy up and solve. So if we put, uh, and again, you can divide this whole thing by the looks of it by 4 if you want as well. If we add the 16x to both sides, we're going to have 24x uh, plus 20, and adding the 4y to both sides, that's going to give us 8y and then we're going to have now plus uh, 68. Does that look right? There we go. Um, so where are we going to do? If we uh, subtract now the 20 from both sides. So 24x is equal to 8y plus uh, the, what are we going to have there? Plus 48. Uh, divide through, what are we going to divide this through by um, 8? So what's that going to give us? 3x is equal to y plus 6, or if you want, um, y is equal to 3x minus 6. So as you can see, it can be done that way. I think that's a bit messy. Um, but alternatively, you can look at this in terms of simply uh, finding these, finding the gradient, switching the gradient around, multiply it by minus 1, finding your midpoint and going through them. Um, so you'll probably find a quicker quicker way around that, but as you can see, the square terms are going to be dropping out and we end up with a, a linear equation. So when you've got your time, divide all of that out by uh, 4 rather than make it all messy like I have. Okay, um, right, let's look at some of the others. All we would need to do on this particular case is multiply both sides by the modulus of z minus 6i. So z plus 3i, modulus of that is equal to the modulus of z minus 6i. And that simply leaves us exactly where we were with examples like this, where we're going to have 6i and minus 3i. We would find the perpendicular bisector of those. Again, exactly the same with this one right here. You would just manipulate it such that you would have the modulus of uh, z plus 6 minus i is equal to the modulus of z minus 10 minus 5i. Find your points, either do it geometrically or do it with algebra, and you can go from there. This one, we can now take minus 1 out of here. So, as we did in the last video, you can divide through or take a factor of minus 1 out. The modulus of minus 1 is 1. So if you take that out, take the modulus of it, you're simply left in exactly the same place. So all of these are perpendicular bisectors. Some, just draw them. Some, you might want to use either the algebraic technique or the geometric uh, approach.